Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, reviewers, and manufacturers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at a new CRKT in Life Knife, Knife Life News. Uh, we will uh, take a look at a couple of new Bowies I have, and then best bang for your buck, under 60 bucks. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week came from Red Astrachan, uh, who was commenting on a short I did, a YouTube short I did on the Black Mule Bowie. He says, uh, also, uh, he says, uh, Bark River and 3CR in the same vid. You rock, Bob. Well, of course, I love hearing that I rock, so I'll never, uh, never not love that. But uh, also, it kind of this comment embodies the spirit of the Knife Junkie channel in general. And uh, I guess it's apparent because it's in the name, Junkie. Uh, I like it all uh, from the super expensive Bark River knives, uh, that Shining Mountain Bowie, to its $25 analog from Rough Rider, the Black Mule Bowie. I, I love them both, and they were both appearing in the same video. And basically, I was saying, if you can't afford, can't find, or don't want to get a Bark River Shining Mountain Bowie, but you like the shape and you're just a little bit fascinated, Spend 25 bucks and you get a 3CR blade that you can bang on all day long. And I did more of that this past weekend, uh, which you'll see, um, you'll, you'll hear detailed and you can read uh, in the newsletter. But I, I took a bunch of these blades out and thumped on them in the backyard on an epic, beautiful afternoon that I had all to myself. It was lovely. Uh, but uh, anyway, all that being said, thank you, Red Astrachan for your comment thanks everyone one and all for watching the videos on youtube and commenting and and being a part of the channel it's greatly appreciated now i think it's time for a pocket check Today's carry was uh, both one of my favorite EDCs these days. Oh, I got to use the other hand because I've really butchered this finger. Uh, one of my favorite EDCs these days, and it's also an ESK, a, a perfect emotional support knife uh, because it has such great fidget factor here. Uh, but this is the Kaiser Begleiter XL. Uh, it first came out as a an exclusive uh, to White Mountain Knives when it was uh, in the tan. I believe it was canvas micarta or maybe linen like this. But uh, so that was the initial run. It sold out uh, pretty quickly and people were loving that knife. And uh, a four inch Kaiser button lock begleiter. I, I was I felt like a fool for missing out on. Finally, they came back out with this red one uh, in addition to tan and a couple of G10 uh, flavors over on White Mountain Knives, and now it is a staple in the uh, in the Kaiser um, Kaiser lineup. So I guess they started as an exclusive. I think that's a cool way to do it. Roll it out exclusively uh, for one company, White Mountain Knives, and uh, and then eventually release it to the to the to all the purveyors. And um, yeah, great knife by the way. Uh, this is 154 cm, almost full height. Uh, almost a full height flat grind, beautiful swedge up front. I love the shape of this blade. Uh, I generally tend to be kind of lukewarm about, about most drop points. This one is excellent. I just used this for something. I should have cleaned it. Sorry about that. Uh, but just really stellar action on this thing, whether you are uh, using that awesome low profile flipper tab or flicking it with the thumb or the middle finger just a just a great knife and large and capable no doubt also on me today i had the jack wolf knives cyborg jack the new cyborg jack this thing is awesome and um you know at first when it came out i was like oh that handle it's so you know it's so scandalously angular uh and oh god man it, it is really comfortable that's one thing i got to keep uh, coming back to with the jack wolf knives is the ergonomics are outstanding on all of them and a few of them a an absolute highlight um 
this knife being one of them, I would say the uh, the gunstock jack and the um, and the canine jack. Three knives where the ergonomics are are shining stars. Not not just uh, uh, something you use to hold on to that you're not really thinking about because you're thinking about the blade. You're thinking about the ergonomics on these just because it almost feels better to have it in your hand than not. So really cool design and uh, turns out to be a very useful ergonomic design as well as unique. I like this, this little swoop here. It's very subtle, but there's a swoop where the thumb rests naturally there. And uh, man, what a great knife this is. So double micarta as I'm looking at it. Actually, it's about to be triple micarta because on my waistband, uh, in the three o'clock position in my waistband, was uh, the knife that I'm just not without anymore these days. This is the Hogtooth Knife Ruffian, and I'm going to show it to you in the sheath because the sheath is awesome. Part of the reason why I can carry it all the time. This is about on the outer limits of what I can comfortably carry uh, in the waistband for a fixed blade. I have uh, carried larger, but just not consistently because I'm fussing with it all day. And this uh, this is about as large as I can go without having to fuss. And what is this? This is a I keep forgetting four and a half inch blade. 154 cm hollow ground. Uh, you got an acid uh, stone wash on it. Um, this is this is a custom. Now I often will call things that are handmade custom and oftentimes they are uh, but this one is custom to me i was in his shop and he was like and i saw a, a couple of blanks for this model his ruffian laying around I'm like god i love this thing uh, i think i'll order one for my birthday so we looked through his g10 and and his liners and i i selected i selected those uh whereas my other custom hog tooth um i'm not talking about the big build uh, but the one that uh, the Tonto, that was one that he had already made and I loved and selected. But this one was soup to nuts, uh, a a custom knife. Incredibly sharp, incredibly ergonomic and just awesome. I, I attempted one video this past week, which I might post where I try to do a comma cut with this, a C cut in a, a small watermelon that's on top of a little four by four. So when I say attempt, I did a I. I slashed it, but it didn't stay there. It dropped and the whole thing cracked open. So I couldn't really show off the power of that, that kind of cut that I was trying to do. Anyway, this thing is insanely sharp. Uh, on the day I was doing a bunch of uh, wood processing to test out my budget Bowie knives. I took that out and used it for um, feather sticking because I, I started a fire and it was burning papers and all that stuff. And um, like its cousin, the Tonto, the Hogtooth Tonto. This thing is so sharp; it made just curly cues uh, that that stayed on the board on the uh, piece of wood with zero effort. Amazing knife, and uh, yeah, love that thing. Carry it all the time. Uh, and then lastly, I I did have an ESK on me today for emotional support. I had the Baby Rhino by Off Grid Knives. I love showing this thing off. People love this thing, um, but what a great knife to use too because. Uh, they maintain the thickness of the original, much larger Rhino. And even though this is a three finger knife, that fatness in handle, the width of the handle really gives you uh, good control over this knife. Also, uh, they put a row of jimping on the downslope, forward downslope of the of the uh, blade. And I love it there. That's really awesome. I actually think it would be good on the big, big model, too. But that jimping there and the width of the handle plus the ergonomics, uh, the profile of the handle, make this a super steady in hand, uh, small, small blade. This was featured last week in the uh, Tiny Knives episode. So this is what I had on me today. The Beglider XL by uh, Kaiser, the Cyborg Jack by Jack Wolf Knives, the Ruffian by Hogtooth Knives, and the Baby Rhino by Off Grid Knives. Um, you know, do I need them all? Yes. Uh, so I had them. Luckily, I wasn't under knived today. Now, what did you carry? Let me know. Drop it in the in the comments below. I always love to hear what you guys are carrying. It's funny. I'll get some comments that are just 
just knives. And that's it's like that's the international language. Uh, you can just say uh, uh, Crooked River. And I'm like, man, I know all about you and I love you. So uh, drop it in the comments below. All right. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern right here, uh, Eastern uh, Standard Time, and right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. This is what we're giving away. What an awesome, beautiful knife. This is the Max Ace. I, I love Max Ace. I'll tell you why in a sec. This is the Max Ace Balance K. Uh, this is a knife that was donated to the channel by our good friend Dave, this old sword, Blade Reviews. Go check out his channel for just amazing stuff. And now he's He's going heavy into the into the custom fixed blades, and he's got some serious eye candy on his channel. So please go check him out. Uh, but this Balance K is an awesome knife. It this is their uh, K110 steel. It's analogous to D2 steel and uh, contoured and sculpted G10 with amazing liner lock action, which I can even do with this nasty uh, cut up finger here. Um, what I love about this company is that you can have this knife, you can purchase this knife for less than a hundred bucks. Or if you really like this design, you can get a titanium version that's like super sculpted with uh, with super steel blade and titanium frame lock. And um, I really like how Max Ace has these unique designs and they they dress them to the nines and then they will also take them, take them down to just G10 and K110. This is a great uh, work knife, and I think it's extremely stylish. It's got a full height uh, flat grind, and uh, I think it's going to cut for years and years because it feels like paper thin. <laughs> it feels paper thin. You're going to be able to sharpen uh, all the way up that sharpening notch and get years of life out of this knife. Uh, so this is the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway this month. Be sure to go over to Patreon and check us out. We have three levels of support. Um, you know, And the top level of support, you're a Gentleman Junkie, there's Traditional Junkie, and there is Tactical Junkie. At the uh, Gentleman Junkie level, you get entered into automatically into a monthly knife giveaway. It's always fun. All right, uh, lastly, uh, I, I want to bring this up. I wanted to make a video of it, but uh, we've had the flu in the house and uh, a lot of things getting in the way of making a video. Uh, so I want to I want to feature this here. This is a letter from the great and powerful Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives. He sent this to my daughters in response to uh, the unboxing videos I've had. You know, I've unboxed, done a bunch of unboxing videos of the Jack Wolf Knives. And every time uh, if my daughters are present, it's, can we have the sticker? Please, can I have the sticker? And I'm like, no, that's part of the whole package. You know, Jack Wolf Knives packaging is an experience. And you take away the sticker and you're removing part of the experience, daughter. And uh, so I kept saying no. And people were saying I was being a stingy old fart and a curmudgeon. And I had to let them have these stickers. What are you going to do with this sticker, old man? And it's like, it's none of your business what I'm going to do with them. I'm leaving it where it belongs in the tube. So Ben gentleman that he is, uh, reached out to my girls with this. Uh, Bob DeMarco, attention daughters from Jack Wolf Knives. Um, check this out. He sent a whole bunch. He sent two of each sticker. <laughs> uh, some have been, half of them have already been harvested out. But look at this. This is, this is cool. Dear Bob's Daughters, I hope you enjoy these stickers. Now you can be cool like your dad. Sincerely, Uncle Ben, Jack Wolf Knives. I love that. Ben, thank you so much. My girls were so thrilled, A, to get a letter in the mail this day and age. And then B, I said, look at look at the return address. And they're like, Jack Wolf Knives. I'm like, it says do not bend. You know what these are? And they freaked. So uh, they are going to be making you something in return, and it will be back in the mail headed uh, towards you. But thank you so much. Now I don't have to hear it from them, and uh, I really appreciate it. It also looks like it might be some clues in here as to what's next. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Ben, thank you so much, uh, not only for your amazing knives and Jack Wolf knives, but also for taking taking the extra time um, to to make the day of a, of a couple of little girls over here in Virginia.
All righty, sir. Uh, and one and all, still to come on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at a couple of new knives, one from CRKT that looks really cool, one named after my dog, and then we're going to do the state of the collection. And then, of course, bang for your buck, under 60 bucks, right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Columbia River Knife and Tool, CRKT, some call up cricket uh came out a couple of years ago started a uh, a series of knives called forged by war and they are knives designed by veterans uh of uh, the united states uh, armed forces combat vets who uh have interest in knives obviously some of them knife makers some of them designers and uh have designed they have started a line of knives from these uh these veterans and this one this new one is cool because it's a large folder and it's got vef serrations and it looks built for speed it's also cool because it's called the taco viper and i just I, I love it i love the name taco viper and i knew it had to be some sort of inside joke and we'll get to that in a second uh, but this is a 4.2 inch blade uh, it's d2 uh, coated it's four one wait what is this steel i need to look it up i can never remember uh, it's 1.4116 steel. And I know cold steel has used that on some of their budget, uh, knives. That's an entry level stainless steel in this case coated, uh, goes into this really nice GRN handle. I love the shape of that handle. Uh, and, and it's a, it's a big, big knife. Um, taco Viper, uh, taco Viper is an inside joke. He, uh, the gentleman who designed this, um, uh, so, okay, wait, before I get to that, uh, this guy, Antonio Rodriguez, the, the designer of this, is the son of Michael Rodriguez, who is also a vet and designed two knives for CRKT's uh, Forged by War lineup. So this is kind of a cool thing, too. Father and then son, and he's designing this cool knife. And uh, so built for combat, built for uh, uh, this this kind of hard hard use and taco viper finally uh so he was a member of the 82nd airborne and they would have taco tuesdays and then these snakes would come in and uh, kind of clean up the leftovers so they called them taco vipers and that's what this is named after and i love it and i'm sure it's a really cool story when told by uh you know um, antonio himself uh but Cool story, cool background, and man, that's a hell of a cool knife. I love the gear pattern, um, the gear pattern jimping on top, on the top of the spine of the blade and at the back. Um, and I love the VEF serrations. Usually you see them larger and in threes. In this case, they're a little bit smaller and there are four of them. Just looks like a wicked knife. Again, as something I say about CRKT all the time, this also looks like it would be a great knife in higher end materials you know maybe they could take a cue from max ace and uh, do both i think crkt i don't know they seem to have a lot of capacity so it'd be cool to see high end they, they were dabbling they were flirting with it for a while this the high-end knives but they went a little too close to the sun because their their high-end knives were ridiculously expensive and not the kind of price people want to pay uh for a crkt at least right away you know you got to wine me and dine me a little bit and get me warmed up before i'm going to pay that much but who knows a, a 200 dollars version of this in titanium and m390 made in the united states that'd be cool anyway just a thought all right next up uh speaking of cool this dog uh, this next uh, knife is named after our dog argus uh, we have a dog He's an awesome dog. His name is Argus, uh, but we call him Argo. It just kind of rolls off the tongue easier. But uh, Argus is his uh, birth, birth name, the name on his certificate. I don't think he has one. But um, anyway, named after Odysseus's dog, uh, the most loyal dog, you know, the, the, the quintessential loyal dog who waits around for 20 years for his master to return from first the sack of Troy and then 
10 years of mishaps uh, put on him by Poseidon trying to get home. And then uh, he sees his master walk through the door uh, disguised by a god. Athena disguises him as an old wretch. But still, the dog Argus recognizes him, stands up on his pile of filth, wags his tail once, and collapses in a heap of bones and skin. Uh, I love that story. And so that's why we named our dog Argus. And that is the long setup for this new knife from Fox from their Black Sable line. Uh, that's their budget line. But man, this thing is beautiful. Uh, from Russian designer Grigory Matviev, Matviev or Matveev. I'm not sure how to pronounce uh, Russian. But this thing is beautiful. Uh, it has uh, a just north of 3.5 inch blade, which is, you know, now now we're talking my love language here. And it's got like, it's got this drop point that is definitely kind of, uh, what do you want to say? Kind of worn cliffy, um, but uh, very pointy and pokey while keeping that, uh, keeping that point low. Uh, low down for utility cut. So it looks like uh, it's an all arounder type blade. Uh, comes in G10 in this beautiful olive wood. And I don't know what the cost is, but no doubt it'll, it will be um, on the more affordable side of things uh, due to the the um, the line that it's coming out in. But I I just, I have to say, I, I think it's a beautiful knife. And there is a, there is a, a sort of design language that you can see um, from different cultures and to me this looks like a russian knife uh, it just does and and i don't know if i would think that if i didn't know um the designer's name but mm, it just looks beautiful i love the lines of it so anyway the new argus folder uh appealing in so many ways uh, on the way from fox uh their black label or black sable label all right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, the state of the collection. There are a couple of knives on loan that are really cool, and then one that I got that uh, uh, I now own because it has tasted my blood. Then, best bang for your buck, under 60 bucks, right here on the Knife the Podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. One of the knives I was thumping on this past weekend to see, you know, because here's how it works with me. If it's if it's uh, something that's affordable to me, um, I will I will take it out and I don't want to say abuse it, but but use it harder, slam it into wood and that kind of thing. And if it's if it's a little bit more expensive and probably because it's got better materials and, and technically might be more capable, I'm a little more uh, iffy about taking them out and thumping on them. Anyway, this one falls in the former category and I've been wanting this knife for years and years. This is the, um, the Raider Bowie, the SP 10 by Ontario knife and tool. And I'm glad I waited because I think in the time that I first spotted this and now I think they have, upgraded the sheath um this sheath is pretty nice for a nylon sheath it has a very very stout plastic um uh lining that i cannot squeeze and i mean yeah i can't really squeeze it and make it touch the blade so it's a very stout inner lining a very nice cordura style um uh, outer with a um was this called a molly uh, loop system here so you can attach it to your molly gear you also have a belt loop here um and then you have two retention straps which i appreciate actually uh you have this one here that is that can be removed and can also be um adjusted you can make it wider say you wrap your your handle and tape some people like to wrap it in athletic tape or or something like that or say you even change the handle out um you can you can make a, a bigger strap, which is kind of cool. And then you have this strap, which I really like because uh, I'm a fan of, of this kind of retention, the strap that goes over the guard more than the one that goes around the handle. 
And this one you can switch from place to place. So naturally you're gonna want this on the spine side of the blade so that it doesn't cut as you remove it. Um, but if you choose to orient your blade in the other direction, you can slide this over and uh, have it on the spine side with the knife oriented in the opposite direction. All right, enough about this beautiful sheath. It really is beautiful. And I got to say, I like the white stitching. It's like, uh, looks like my seats in, you know, my Lamborghini, you know, with the, with the stitching. Uh, okay, so here is the knife. Oh, my God, this thing is beautiful. And in case, uh, in, <laughs> in case there's any doubt, I do not drive a Lamborghini. Uh, so as you can see, I have taken this out. I have thumped on it, meaning I've batoned this through a bunch of hardened um, kiln dried wood. And it did beautifully. It has a, a saber grind. So it's a flat grind that comes halfway up the blade. So it's a nice sort of wedge like action and not so much up here for it to get hung up on. Um, and then this coating feels a bit like black traction coating, um, but I think it is not as good. Um, it has begun to smooth and then even come off here uh, a little bit. You can see the blade steel through the coating. Now, the tops, I think, last a little bit longer, but tops are more expensive knives. Anyway, uh, this is a 1095 blade steel. I uh, love 1095. It is tough. It gets sharp. It's easy to sharpen. It's just a great all-around blade steel, but being high carbon, it is prone to rust, so, so a coated blade is, is the way to go. Um, I do look forward to um, kind of just through use, removing some of this coating. I've seen other people's knives. If you look at uh, Scab's Ontario or uh, Nut and Fancy's uh, SP10, they're all, you know, all of the coating, much of the coating is worn away and it just looks cool. Uh, you have a uh, traditional sort of Raider style blade. You see that in the V44 uh, Bark River. You see it in the Western 49 or the, or the Western Bowie, say, by um, Cold Steel. It's, it's this style of, of very curved clip with a um, widening towards the tip belly. Um, this was this is a take on the on the Marine Corps uh, knife that was used a lot in the South Pacific, was it? Um, you have a big swedge and a thinly ground swedge, which is, you know, pretty devastating. You don't need this to be sharp to be able to do some gouging and break bones and tear uh, with this kind of a swedge. Down here, you know, if you're using this in combat, down here you have a really nice oval guard that extends not only be, uh, uh, north and south, but east and west. So that uh, if you are thrusting or if you have, um, it, it just gives you a little extra guardage on the sides here. It's very nice. Um, and then a thick rubber handle. This handle is in cross section. Here, let me see if I can get it under here. It's curved on the bottom and kind of flat on the top. So you always know which way it's oriented and it's it's not going to twist in your hand. Uh, I mean, I was chopping down, trying to, uh, with one blow, chop through some wood and I, I wasn't successful at any point, but it never turned in my hand. Uh, it had a very firm grip. And then the, the rubber is kind of grippy and rubbery. You got this great little uh, bird's beak on the back. Uh, just an awesome knife just a great great knife um in terms of the rest of my bowies i would consider this even though it's uh it's kind of set up like a fighter to me it's a little little too heavy for that and the handle is a little thick for that but what a great outdoor um outdoors knife this would be a great survival knife to have um on you all right so that is the sp10 that will show up later. Uh, also, uh, to show off, these are two knives in um, on loan from Skookum Danger. Thank you so much, Skookum Danger. These things are phenomenally beautiful. Uh, so these are the work of two gentlemen who have been uh, on the show somewhat recently. Um, they are designed by James Williams. These are the Hira Zukuri 
uh, uh, Japanese fighting knives, uh, a 5.75 inch and a nine and a nine inch um, designed by by James Williams. And these are produced by Winkler knives. Um, and we had Daniel Winkler on recently. Uh, two two great guys working together making these incredible knives. Uh, okay, so what are these? These are traditional Japanese style uh, fighting knives. Um, I want to call them tantos, but I'm, I'm not. I, they're not. They're hero zakuris. <laughs> so uh, they both come in these really beautiful molded leather sheaths. They are hard. You you are not squeezing these and touching. I mean, I guess you you could really power that close, but they're lined with felt or something. It must be felt. They're lined very soft. They make no noise when removed. And that is by design. That is the sound they make. Listen. Now that's right up to a, a microphone. But if you're sneaking up on someone and you pull that out, it's not going to be, it's not going to be heard. Uh, and that's what these are for. I mean, these are, these are fighting knives, fighting knives i mean okay so and then here's the big one this is black leather beautiful these sheaths are amazing by the way i'm, I'm surprised no you don't see more of this but look at this thing oh my gosh i think yeah these are serial oh no they're not serial numbered okay so you see on the micarta handles they have um x's milled into the sides into the flats of the handle uh, those are for gription, and of course, the shape is evocative of the wrap, traditional sukamaki wrap on a um, traditional Japanese knife or sword. And the same thing for the jimping on the side. You have this big gear jimping on the sides at the top and the, the, the dorsal and pectoral sides of the um, handle, and they look like the cord wrap, but also they just give you all of that grip you want. These knives have no guard, but are definitely point-oriented, thrusting-oriented knives. And I asked James Williams when he was on the show, you know, why, why on such a thrusty knife do you not have any guard? And he said, it's the handle design and the blade design. You know, the design of the knife does not uh, necessitate it. Um, just look at the tip of this. If, you, uh, if, if you're watching, you'll see that this curved blade is just long and very very thin and comes to an extremely acute point but when you pop it on its top you can see it's reinforced well all the way to the tip um this is not you know one i would want to drop on the floor uh tip first but it has a very well reinforced tip and it is extremely sharp and then down on the handle you have all of this uh gripping uh, be it that jimping or these x's and then the shape of the handle uh, swells a little bit towards the Ricasso. So it gives you great purchase. Um, also, it's designed to nestle into the, into the palm of the hand as well. Or in a reverse grip, you have all of this wonderful jimping up top. So this, this knife does not, these knives, this big one is kind of hard, hard for me to maneuver. I'll use this small one. These knives are, are just do not need much. They do not need the guard. They have this super powerful blade. I mean, look at this. This one, this five and a half inch is even more stout, seems to me. Um, CRKT makes a version for about 125 bucks, I believe, of the Hero Zakuri. They look, uh, I think it's a, a size in between these two. But it looks very much like these, and I believe it's black coated. Obviously, it's not not the same kind of knife. These are five hundred dollar Winkler made knives, and uh, uh, but if you like that shape, you like the spirit of these knives, you can get it in the CRKT uh, Hero Zakuri. But also, they make all these other James Williams knives that can be had, like the Hisatsu. That's the one I have. I love that knife, and then all the different uh, sizes of that and then the little folders. So a lot of James Williams knives out there and James Williams designs. But if you want the most premium, you seek these out. Now, these are sold out on the, you know, they're sold out, so you have to find it on the secondary at this point. And I'm just holding this five and a half inch in my hand right now. And man, it feels amazing. 
it really feels amazing. I talk about this a lot, about how the pommel needs a good landing spot for the thumb on a knife that's going to be used for fighting. That is perfect. You got two big jimps up there and a crown, something to wrap your, your thumb around. This, this knife is amazing. Thank you so much, Skookum Danger, for um, exposing me to these. I've gawked at them from afar for a long time, and it's amazing to have them in hand. Uh, I will be doing my videos, and then I will get them back to you post-haste. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want these gone for long if they were mine. Uh, oh, let me just show you real quickly, too, up front. Uh, the micarta on the other one is really nice black, but I love this. This looks so cool in the burlap micarta it just somehow seems to fit the theme of the knife i don't know how Oof, this thing is amazing and these sheaths also outstanding okay lastly this one is on loan from jock of jock's knives uh, i forgot i forgot to uh, mention that um earlier in my notes but yes this is a beautiful uh, knife, you know, Jock of Jock's Knives, uh, following him on Instagram for beautiful uh, pictures. He's over in the UK and he will buy knives and then um, I'll check them out and then I'll send them over to him. He has them drop shipped to me. And uh, I always love it when I see a box from Emerson because I always know, um, well, I didn't order it, A and B. It's like some cool surprise uh, for me to check out. This is the Ski and Do. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and uh, it looks like Siggy and Dub, basically, Ski and Do. It's a, the, the small knife, that uh, small Scottish sock knife, I think, is, is how you might describe it. But, you know, when you see um, uh, men in kilts and they have the knife at the top of their uh, tall sock, this is a version of that. And it's set up for neck carry. Got this beautiful sheath here. Uh, of leather with the embossed Emerson uh, logo on it. Very nice. And then here is the blade. So you have this beautiful sort of, um, what do you call this? Not work Gaelic, not work or something that sort of pattern. I don't know. I feel like I've seen it on tattoos and uh, intuitively I know that that's sort of uh, Scottish, but I just don't know why. <laughs> uh, but it looks very uh, evocative of that. You've got this cool jimping all the way down the spine. And of course, with this hole and these two holes, you are set up to do some sort of cool leather uh, cord wrap. Or um, if this were mine, I would do a leather cord wrap. Or you could do um, flattened uh, paracord or round paracord. You just have to make sure that it it fits in the sheath. Uh, this is a friction fit. I was wondering if it had a magnet in it. Like sometimes you see um, uh, neck knives from BR, uh, Bark River Knives. They'll, they'll put a magnet in there. So if it's hanging upside down, it's not relying completely on friction. This one uh, relies completely on friction. Um, very, very nice knife. I If this were mine, if this were mine, I think it'd be worth trying out taking off the chain and just having this be a back pocket knife or a front pocket knife, depending where you are. You, you don't want to necessarily present a knife to the world uh, on your backside that they could just pull right out and thrust into your back. But I, I do really like this, uh, this thing. I love Emerson knives, as you know, and then these quirky little uh, side projects, uh, the little knives and all that kind of stuff. I, I just love uh, this. You can tell goes in deeper, but I, I'm not going to be the one who, who does that? That's for Jock to do. Uh, but very, very nice knife. Uh, thank you, Jock, for letting me check this out. It's greatly appreciated. All right. So let's get to the the, the main thrust here. And uh, that is best bang for your buck under 60 bucks. This knife, the Rough Rider Black Mule Bowie, you have seen right here a bunch of times in the past couple of weeks. I got this. Um, as you know, I've been in a Bowie phase and uh, I bought a couple of hmm, hundred dollar Bowies and I was like, I can't, I can't just be in a Bowie phase and just spending a lot of money. Uh, so what else is there? And I looked up, uh, I went on to see uh, onto uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, found the Black Mule Bowie. 
And then I did a bunch of online research, meaning watched all of the uh, Donnie B all day videos and pistol Pete videos and, um, and uh, uh, choir boys videos on this and was convinced and I got it. And man, this is about the best 25 bucks you can spend on a fixed blade. Uh, it is full tang. I know that from watching Pistol Pete's video. He took the handle off and the tang goes all the way down. Um, you've got this rubber grip that really absorbs uh, energy and shock because this is the kind of knife you're not going to be shy about slamming into stuff. This is a 3CR13 blade. That's right. 3CR13. I got to say, perfectly ground. Really, really really <laughs> nicely ground symmetrical on both sides not just the main bevels uh but the edge and i don't know but they heat treated the the living daylights out of this thing and whatever they did they did right because uh with this is three cr13 mov and um i i think i'm making the faulty assumption that it's five worse than eight cr i just think it's different less chromium does that make it tougher i don't know but this thing is came very sharp, came paper slicing sharp, and uh, has done a lot of duty in uh, you know with wood, slammed through a lot of wood and batoning, and just kind of trying to dull it. And it is still paper slicing sharp. This thing is really, really bang for your buck. Nine inch Bowie looks great, and I got to tell you, and I'm telling you right now, it performs awesome. It does. Um, if I had the guts to do what I was doing to this, to my Bark River knife, I'd be able to tell you how much, uh, how it compares. But like I said, I don't, I spent a lot of money on that knife and I don't want to damage it. And I'm afraid, and I'm sure it can handle it, but I'm sure I can replace this for 25 bucks. If this one doesn't, uh, you know, do all this, the dumb stuff I want it to. Whereas that shining mountain Bowie, I can't replace. So there you go. First up black mule Bowie highly recommend it next up bang for your buck uh this is one that we see a million different iterations of now uh but this is the original flavor this is the uh qsp penguin and it can be had for 32 bucks in this very appealing dress this is d2 blade steel very very nicely flat ground comes to a great and very sharp edge again a very i'm saying very a lot again a consistent edge on both sides just evenly ground on both sides and very nicely done um this one has the denim micarta love this denim micarta reminds me of the denim a train engineer wears um and you've got a steel liner lock in there deep carry pocket clip very very nice uh it's got the button screws i'm not sure if they've changed that on the more recent iterations yes I, actually i think i can be uh because i have one over there but i didn't check okay and um that blade length is in most people's uh wheelhouse just under 3.25 inches right one oh that's right wait sorry i'm terrible at measuring one two three yeah it's about three and a quarter inches it's not that i'm terrible at at, at measuring i get stage fright with any sort of math in front of y'all. So you're like, Bob, that's not math. That's simple counting. Yes. Well, keep it to yourself. Uh, nice jimping on top. Really uh, great terraced thumb studs. For 32 bucks, the P QSP Penguin is very, very hard to beat for, a, for an everyday carry uh, utility knife. Plus that shape, you know, that sheep's foot shape is so good for utility and, um, you know, pull cuts and all that kind of those kind of cuts where you want that point low and it's kind of non-threatening looking, you know, uh, and now it's coming in a million different flavors. So, uh, larger and smaller than this. And like I said, you, you just can get it in, in any way you want it. QSP penguin. All right. Next up is the BPS knives. Uh, this is the HK five. This is a $32 knife. I'll show it in the sheath because the sheath is sumptuous. It is a beautiful, thick grain leather sheath uh, with that white stitching. It feels good in the hand. I'd love to have a leather jacket made of this leather, and it would take like a lifetime to break in because it's so thick, but it would be the coolest ever. Um, but 
okay, so this sheath is awesome, even with the dangler, and I'm not a dangler kind of guy. Uh, but I had this on my belt, just uh, tooling around this past weekend, because um, I wanted to try this one out again. I had used it once before, uh, before I did my close-up review on it, but I wanted to do more. And what I used this for yesterday, this is a beautifully Scandi ground 1066. You can never read it. Yeah, I think it's 1085 or something. It's a high carbon steel. I just can't read it. Sonny, can you read this for me? Uh, Scandi ground blade, this thing, uh, I used it to carve the handle of a baton. I was using a piece of hardwood to baton the other hardwood. And it was just, you know, kind of shredding the hand or just uncomfortable on the hand. And yes, I could have used gloves, but I chose to take this out and carve a nice round handle for me to grip on the baton. And this is so wickedly sharp. Uh, BPS, it's a father and son team out of Ukraine um, making these knives. You can buy them on, um, you can get them from the website, but you can also get them on Amazon really comfortable ergonomic handle and um, a 90 degree spine, which is not very comfortable when you're putting your thumb there uh, ungloved, but that 90 de degree spine is for throwing sparks and stuff like that. So um, the unfinished handle is very comfortable, but now that I've done some, I've shown it off and, and, and all that, I think I'm going to stain it, do it, uh, make it maroon or, or something, just give it a nice color. Uh, 30 for 37 or 32 bucks. This thing is a tremendous outdoor knife. It, it, it has, uh, um, has not dulled through, through a bunch of carving feels like it hasn't dulled anyway. I haven't really tested, uh, but it, it's still like carving like nothing. And, um, I have full confidence in this knife, uh, as a, um, you know, I I've been thinking recently I need to get a Mora, but with this, i I don't, I'm not a real woods crafty guy and this covers me and covers my Mora front, I believe. All right. Next up in best bang for the buck here. I could have so many more cold steels. I only have two in this list, uh, but this one is the SRK. This is a classic and really deserves to be on this uh, menu here. Now I looked up last night uh, what the cost of this one is thinking it was going to be around 40 bucks. This is the SK5 version. That's the, the uh, you know, the less, it's the entry-level steel version. SK5 is a carbon steel. They have this nicely coated, uh, but you can get this in their 3V uh, for much more. And I think there are some other intermediate steels that you can, that, uh, it, it, that they made the SRK and that are still available. Uh, but mostly it's this, the the low end or the high end. I believe that there is a San Mai in the middle. That's what it is. But this is a classic six inch uh, clip point knife. They've been making this for years and years. And SRK stands for survival rescue knife. It's just a great, a great knife to have on you like whenever. But if something goes wrong and you have this, you are psyched because it's a do everything knife. If you need it uh, to be defensive, it can be defensive. If you need it to baton through wood, it is more than capable of doing that, though it is you know, somewhat thin. Uh, or not somewhat thin, but somewhat short at, what is it, six inches? Yeah. Um, if you need it to be defensive, it, it's got a zero ground swedge and a, an excellent, you know, um, it's basically like a dagger at the point. Um, so this thing is definitely a do-all knife. You've got the the Coke bottle shaped handle of Grivery. So very grippy handle. Also, um, you know, it's never my first choice. I, I'd always prefer wood or bone or, you know, some cool material, you know, even stacked leather uh, on a fixed blade handle. But these rubberized handles are great for actual work because they absorb so much shock. It can be rattling to have a wooden handle Bowie that you're, chop or, or even just a, a machete that you're chopping into wood and and it starts to rattle the hand so to have this uh grivery is great not only for grip but for that shock absorption you got a nice uh single quillion here single quillion guard so you're not going to slide up on a thrust but you have all the clearance to put your thumb back here to do the kind of work you're probably going to be doing with this srk uh so this one can be had for 37 bucks that's uh, high carbon SK5, uh, wait, 
carbon V. Oh, I'm sorry, this is carbon V, not SK5. I think SK5 is a blade steel they used a while ago. So check this one out. It's a great one just to have. You know, I always talk about the K-Bar as, as being like that, that fixed blade knife you need to have if you're not a fixed blade guy. Uh, if not the K-Bar, definitely the SRK. Next up in bang for your buck is the Kubi Flash. Man, Kubi knives, uh, you could put any number of Kubis on this list, but this is the one that has really proven Kubi to me. Uh, I got this one because I wanted to try out the brand and um, or something larger from the brand. I had a smaller, uh, the smaller uh, Vagabond or Vagrant. I can't remember what it's called. Vagrant, I believe. And I wanted something bigger. So I loved this blade shape, this sort of bellied worn cliff. Nice point with the swedge. I like the black coating on the blade and then the, the uh, satin flats. I like the shape of the handle, the overall shape, and the size. It's a 3.8-inch blade and silky smooth action. So of all the Kubis, I chose this one for my big one just because I found it to be fetching. But it's way more than just good looking. I've been carrying this thing, well, on and off. Where, wherever I'm going where I might lose my knife, I, I hate to say it, this is one that I will carry because uh, – or primarily this is the one i will carry because at 40 bucks at 40 bucks this thing is a luxury item because it's so inexpensive but it, man it behaves like a knife way out of its weight class um just in terms of its smoothness in terms of its grind it's super thin and that's d2 and man i don't need much more than that so it's very slicey you get the you get you massive utility out of this you also get uh, good weapon ability out of that if if that's what you're looking for uh, in the reverse grip it's very very comfortable great place to put your thumb great shape for for thumb control up there and uh, stellar action you got flat screws and a loop over clip this is the knife the one knife i brought with me to blade show this year because i had to fly and i was worried about losing knives on the way let's just say so i i figured if this is what it is, this is what it is. So uh, very happy with this knife and and could probably say straight across the board, Kubi knives in general. Okay, next up in bang for your buck, under 60. Do you like big knives? Oh, I love big knives. And I love Cold Steel's big knives, but some of them are too expensive. If you're just going to get one and you just want one because you want to experience a big one, uh, I would get the Luzon. Now, the Luzon has a few things that you might, well, you know, it's got grivery handle scales. Well, very nice grivery handle scales with great ergonomics. If you uh, if you look at it from this aspect, you can see how each segment of that bamboo or rattan look um, sculpting it uh, scoops in. So you've get you've got great grip on this thing. This is the six inch version. It also comes in a four inch version. And it flips like a dream for such a big knife. It's got a really stout liner lock with great, great lockup, uh, but also a secondary lock, which on this knife I use. Uh, look at the reach you have. This I have used a lot outside, just uh, banging around. You can see uh, like, well, this, this knife is kept in the kitchen. This is our kitchen large folder. <laughs> and it's in that little box we have where we put messages or keep pencils and all that kind of thing this is there too so this gets pulled out a lot just randomly to open open things i love seeing my petite beautiful wife uh pull this out to open up a package uh, that warms the cockles of my heart uh, but it's also uh a, a the reason it can be 40 dollars at this large uh at this you know large form factor is that the materials are inexpensive it's grivery look at that clip that clip actually works great going back to the old school when they did the molded clips out of grivery uh but also that blade is 8 cr 13 mov and uh i, I hear the size i i see the the heads dropping uh but cold steel they are nothing if they aren't great heat treaters and um they always got the most out of uh, AUS 8 a and they get the best out of aus 10 now 
Uh, they have some 8CR13 MOV knives. Uh, I have two of them, this one, and uh, I can't remember what the other one is, but they work amazingly. They, they get a lot out of their inexpensive steels. So if you like big folders and you want bang for your buck, for $40, you cannot beat the Luzon XL. You can also get the four inch for like 35 bucks or something like that. Okay, next up, uh, this is on so many people's best of lists and it, it's on mine too. This is the Civivi Praxis. Now I'm a late comer to the Praxis. Uh, I, I've only had this knife for, I don't know, probably less than a year. But I remember when it came out, I loved the shape of it. But I don't know if you remember this. In the very beginning, Civivi did all these gold liners and blue line. They they made them look cheap. And I thought that this was a cool looking design. It looked to me like a barong, my, one of my favorite short swords. But I didn't like the, the gold lining. So I just never got it. And then time moved on. They made more models. My interests moved on and that kind of thing. But for years, they've been making the Civivi Praxis now in all different um, sort of shape, uh, not shapes, but materials. And so I finally got one. I love this wood, this rosewood, I think that is, and um, coated blade. It is just so beautiful. But why is this on the list? Because you have a nice, what is this, uh, three and three quarters inch blade. So a nice long blade with a flat grind, but a very thin flat grind. So you get huge utility out of it. Uh, you've got a point, center line point, and a big swedge. So uh, you have nice thrusting ability if you have to thrust this into something. Um, great jimping, very ergonomic handle. Even with uh, wood, which is relatively uh, slick and untextured, uh, the ergonomics of this lock in. So this thing is just a great knife and probably my favorite Sabibi. Probably. All right, that is the Praxis. Again, this is another case where you could just look at the brand and say um, pretty much anything from this brand uh, is going to be righteous and good for you. Kind of like this next one. Uh, this is the Petrified Fish Victor. The Petrified Fish Victor at 45 bucks is an absolute stunner. I remember coming across this. I was looking for the beluga i was going to buy myself a beluga and in my search i saw this and i thought man that's one of the best looking bowie blades i've ever seen you know there's a it's like the 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 buck 110 and and there's the uh, recon one and and there's the there there are the uh the buck fix blades and the the k bar there there are certain clip point blades that just look emblematic and this is one of them to me i think they just design the hell out of that i just think it is a beautiful bowie um and then it's dressed up in this incredible uh incredibly brilliant and vibrant denim micarta and uh, that's k110 i believe k110 steel and just incredible action this knife for 45 bucks feels like an absolute steal really i'm serious <laughs> When people say that, I start to think, you're not serious. You're kind of lying. And I'm not lying. <laughs> Believe me. Trust me. Um, you have this really cool pocket milled out of the backside for um, spidey flicking. I'm like falling back in love with this as I hold it and talk about it. This, this one got a lot of play for me this summer. One ding, that super shiny clip. It does advertise that you've got a knife on you, but it gives you lots of clearance, comes in through the top and has flattened out screws. So petrified fish, everything I've touched by them, I'm super impressed by. Uh, but that Victor has all the impressive build of the other petrified fishes, but the absolute beauty of a perfect Bowie. Also, not for nothing, it has excellent uh, ergonomics. Speaking of Bowies, my car Bowie the Schrade SP SCHF 45 rolls right off the tongue. So they call it the Leroy in the sheath. That kind of bothers me. Here it is. Uh, this was one of the ones I thumped on this uh, past weekend and it proved itself. Awesome. It did. You know, I was uh, trying to wedge through a, uh, a naughty, uh, not um, a K N O T T Y 
a piece of wood and uh, I can't remember. I think it may have been the the uh, black mule it was a little too wedge like. So I pulled that out and put this in and the thinness of this. And this is a hollow grind. This is 8CR13 MOV. And this plowed right through it. This did a really good job. And I think in this case, it was that really thin edge and the thin hollow ground uh, bevel. And then the overall somewhat thin blade stock. It just it powered through it. Did a really good job. Some things about this knife stick in my craw. The, 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 the sheath is a little, I don't know, overbuilt. I've mentioned how I don't like the belt loop. But here, the fact that they just don't have shred on there straight. <laughs> it's kind of like i don't know just just make it parallel with the spine but whatever that is absolutely nothing um i like uh this uh, titanium nitrate coating is wearing nicely and um yeah i call this my car bowie because i've been keeping it in my car i i saw this video uh that just made me feel like someday you might need a, a bowie in your car whether it's to uh escape and get yourself home and and have a capable tool with you or 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 if you get or whether you're you know hijacked and you need to you know scare someone off with it or use it uh it's my car bowie come what may and this thing is only 53 bucks and and it's a nine and a half inch blade super capable and i gotta say it's a it's a looker too it's a good looking knife again it has that rubberized handle which is which is a great idea for any sort of budget knife bowie or whatever knife you're going to use outdoors and be slamming into wood with because it really really ends up helping out even if you have gloves on and then last up i won't wax too poetic about this because i did earlier next up for 56 bucks the most expensive knife in this lineup um this is the ontario knife and tool sp 10 raider bowie or marine raider bowie some people call it and uh it's outstanding 1095 steel or 1075 um I, I think it's come in both but i'm not sure what this one is actually very sharp that's what i mangled my f uh, finger with uh accidentally of course and um just highly highly capable probably uh if you can if you can afford it it's probably um worth twice the cost of the um of the rough rider Bowie, just because you have a, a tougher steel um, and a, a, a thinner grind and overall better fit and finish on, on the uh, on the black mule Bowie, the handle is starting to loosen up. I might just take it off and do a, a new handle build on that one. Um, and and at twenty five bucks, I don't mind. All right. So that is my list of top bang for your buck under 60 bucks. I've been thinking about this uh, because I've been having such fun going outside and going to the stump. I got to figure out what this stump is, the proving stump and uh, and j slamming these knives into it and seeing what they can do. And at 25 bucks, I'm like, if it breaks, I'll get another one because I like the way it looks. Um and that's the that's the beauty of a budget knife. All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming with me uh, down this road. It's been a pleasure. Uh, be sure to download the podcast to your favorite podcast apps as they are listed uh, next to my face. And uh, also be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, where we will doing the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway. Uh, so those patrons who are Gentleman Junkies will be uh, looking to win. Where did I put it? The Max Ace balance k all right ladies and gentlemen for jim working his magic behind the switcher i'm bob demarco saying until next time don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website theknifejunkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenightjunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenightjunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at thenightjunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenightjunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.